Okay, let me make this a little bit more concrete with an example. Let's say that I came up with a study strategy that helps people uh, do better on a certain test. Okay? And so the experiment I'm doing is that I'm taking a, I'm taking seven participants and I have them each solve, let's say, you know, a number of problems. Half the times they solve the problems using my strategy and half the times they solve problems using, um, not using my strategy, okay? And, and I have them come to the lab, let's say five different times to do, you know, every time they solve some problems with my strategy and some problems without my strategy. And then what I do is for every day that they come to the lab, I just take the difference between how well did they perform using my strategy versus how well did they perform without using my strategy. So let's start with participant one. So participant one does all of this. And what I'm showing here on the y-axis is what is the, how much better are participants doing with my strategy compared to um, when they don't use my strategy. Okay. So for subject one came and came to the lab five times, and these are the five results. So the first time the participant came to my lab and the difference between when, when he or she used my strategy versus, uh, versus not using my strategy, was just about two point, I don't know, 75 points. So participants did better by 2.574. Then the next time they came, it was about, they did three points better. And then the time after they did 3.25. And then after they did 3.15. And then they, they came the last time and they only did 2.9, something like that, okay? So these five dots represent how much better on each day did the participant do when using my strategy versus not. So if you overall, if you look at this, it means that on average, this participant kind of had a three point advantage when he or she used my strategy versus not using my strategy. So the average effect is three, but you, you're noticing of course that sometimes the participant got exactly three, but other times, you know, got, got a little, the, 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 you know, the advantage was a little less and other times the advantage was a little more. So even though the average is three, the variability, you know, there was some variability around it. So I'm gonna mark with this gray bar, the variability. You know, how variable was this advantage for this participant? The average was three, but the variability, you know, was this much around the three. And then I have, you know, other six participants come to the lab and you can see, the average and the variability for each of these participants, okay? So if you look at the participants as a whole, what is the average advantage when, when participants used my, uh, used my strategy compared to not using my strategy? Well, one participant had three, one kind of on average did two, one did, I guess, one and a half, a couple did four. This one here really didn't have much of an advantage, only did like about, 0.5 advantage, and this one maybe 2.25. So on average, across all of my sample, the, the average advantage for using my, my strategy was 2.5, okay? So this is, the, uh, this is the estimation. We just estimated our effect. And in fact, I'm gonna put it right here. This vertical bar just, just indexes how big is the effect that we found. If this were fMRI, that would be beta. How big is beta? So we've done, the estimation, now we need to do inference. Now, is this, is 2.5 a meaningful difference? Is it, is it meaningfully different from zero or is it not? Is it statistically rather different from zero or, or is it not? How do we know? Well, we have to compare our effect to the variability. But as I said, there are multiple types of variability that we could be using as the denominator in our t-test. So let's see, how we would obtain and, and how different would it be if we used um, uh, the different variabilities. So let's start with a fixed effects analysis. You remember that a fixed effects analysis is about the variability within each subject. And I'm going to, to index that as usual by calling it sigma squared within. So sigma squared within is the average variability within each subject. The variability within each subject was the gray bar. So I'm highlighting here in red the variability of each subject. If you take each of these variabilities 
and you and you average them, you get your with your you get um, the 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 within subjects variance, which I will say is just about this much. Okay, so this is just about the average of each of these variabilities. Okay, so now let's do our t test. T test is proportional to signal over variability. In fact, it's this over the square root of this divided by the number of participants. Okay, but for the time being, all that matters, I mean, we can do it this way. This, how big is this versus how big is this? This would be a fixed effects analysis. And, and of course, if you look at them, you know, this is many times greater than the variability. So it's likely that if we did a t-test, we would get a significant value. However, we did not account for the fact that our participants vary around the mean. And I'll give you a second example after this to clarify this point, because it clarifies what is the difference in terms of what you can infer from a given experiment. And that's why often we do not use a fixed effects analysis, but we rather use a random, or as we will see, a mixed effects analysis. So the fixed effects analysis was about the how, how variable is, on average, the effect within each subject. So what's the average variability of the effect for each participant? That was the, that was the sigma squared within. The sigma squared between is about how variable is the effect between different participants. So this is the mean, right, and one participant has three of mean, one participant has two, one has one and a half, a couple have four, et cetera. So the variability in the between case is how variable are my participants around the green line, around the overall mean. To do that, really what you have to do is, you see, you take each participant, you see how, how far away they are from the mean, you square that up, and then you take the second participant, and you see how far away they are from the mean, you square that up, and you add it to the first one. And then you take the third one, you see how different they are from the mean, you square it up, add it, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just a measure of how variable are my participants around the mean. And this is known as the sigma squared between. This is between subject variability. So on average, the result was 2.5, but you know, for some it was really high and for some it was really low. That variability, right, the variability around the mean, that is the between subjects variability. And if you were to calculate it, it would be something like this. I think it came out at just about 1.48 when I actually measured it. So now, if we were to do our inference with a random effect, it means that the green line would still be the denominator of the t-test, but the denominator would be proportional to sigma squared between, to this. Would it be significant? Well, the green line is still probably almost looks like two times as big as the, um, this orange line or this peach line. So probably it will still be significant, but you'll easily appreciate how it's not quite as strong an effect as it was before, meaning beta is not that much larger than the between subject as it was for the within subject variable. And, and as I said, in the next example, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain what, are, what do we gain by doing a random effects analysis. And finally, we could do a mixed effects analysis. And as I said earlier, the mixed effects analysis is, the, is uses as the yardstick, as the denominator in the t-test, uh, uses the sum of these two variances of the within and the between. In other words, in terms of our graph here, it would have both the red lines and the peach lines. Right? It would summarize both of them. And so it would really be the sum of this plus this. So it would be this. And I will just color it this way. Okay. And now let's do, you know, let's do our inference again. Well, here's a green line. Is it bigger than the, than the, than the mixed effects variability? Well, yes, it is, but not quite as much as it was for either of the other ones, obviously. So again, you, you're appreciating how you're always more likely to get a significant effect if you use 
a within subjects variance compared to the, be to the between or to the sum of the two. But unfortunately, if you were to use this one as the variance, you would lose a lot in terms of what you can, what you can say uh, about your effect. But I will cover that in the next example.